Is it better to water cool your GPU with an AIO or air? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our next video in our Is It Worth It series. Our Is It Worth It series is focused on showing you just how much you can expect to increase the performance of your system with a drop-in upgrade. One of the biggest challenges with upgrades is that they can rapidly spiral out of control if you're not careful. You start with good intentions, but you rapidly find yourself rebuilding your entire machine. This has happened to me way too many times to count. So for this series, we are going to upgrade one component. No major generational upgrades would require multiple components to be changed. In today's video, we are going to water cool an RTX 4090, the king of gaming cards. Now you may be saying to yourself, so what? That's nothing new. I've seen custom water cooled 4090s all over YouTube. That's absolutely true, but we're not going to use a custom loop. We are going to use an AIO designed specifically for GPUs. Before we get started, I wanted to talk a little about cooling your CPU or GPU, which I'll refer to as a chip moving forward. Like any piece of high performance PC hardware, the chip generates heat when functioning and needs to be properly cooled to achieve maximum performance. But what is the best way to keep your chip operating at an optimum temperature? The options that most PC users consider are either an air cooler or liquid based cooler, and each have its pros and cons. So to determine which one is best for you, we really need to first look at how a chip cooler works. Both air and liquid coolers operate on a similar principle to absorb heat from the chip and redistribute it away from the hardware. The heat generated by the processor itself is distributed to the metal lid of the chip, which is called the IHS or integrated heat spreader. The heat is then transferred to the base plate of the cooler through the applied thermal paste and then distributed either by liquid to a radiator or via metal heat pipes to a heat sink. Fans are then used to blow air over the radiator or heat sink fins to push or pull the heat away from the cooler and in doing so away from the PC. Though the underlying mechanics are similar, the two methods achieve this heat redistribution in very different ways. For an air cooler, the heat pipes conduct heat to a heat sink that is elevated off the motherboard, freeing up space for other components like memory to function underneath. These pipes deliver the energy in the form of heat to the thin metal fins that make up the heat sink. These fins are designed to maximize exposure to the cooler air, which then absorbs the heat from the metal. An attached fan then pushes or pulls the warm air away from the heatsink. The effectiveness of air coolers can vary, with larger air coolers typically dissipating heat better. For liquid cooling, there are two primary options, all-in-one coolers or AIOs and custom cooling loops. To help simplify this comparison, I'm going to focus on AIO coolers, though the fundamental principles of how liquid cools the chip are basically identical. So for an AIO liquid cooler, the base plate transfers heat energy into the coolant or liquid inside the water block. The coolant continues to absorb heat from the base plate as it's pumped through the water block. It then continues to move through the system through one of two tubes that are connected to a radiator. The radiator has thin metal fins that allow the coolant to move through them, thereby heating up. Fans attached to the radiator blow air over these fins, cooling the fins themselves and the liquid inside, thereby moving the heat away from the radiator. The coolant then re-enters the water block and the cycle begins again. The vast majority of AIOs on the market today are based on Acetec patents, so the pump is housed inside the water block. There are other designs that place the pump in the radiator or within the tubes, but these are not as common. One question I see a lot is how to best orient and install your radiator for AIO liquid cooling solutions. Let's come back and answer this important question later in the video. The graphics card being upgraded today is an Asus Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 4090 Overclock Edition. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my Intel-based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, I have an Intel Core i7-14700K. For the motherboard, I have an ASUS ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme. For the RAM, I have Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 64GB DDR5 6200CL32. For storage, I have two Samsung 980 Pro 2TB SSDs. For the CPU cooler, I have an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. And for the PSU, I have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum Power Supply. 
The GPU AIO that I selected is an AlphaCool Eyeswolf 2 360mm cooling solution that's custom made for ASUS Tough and Strix 4090s. I've used GPU AIOs from AlphaCool before and I've been really impressed with their quality in the past. Instead of using the fans that came with the AIO, I decided to use BeQuiet Silent Wings Pro 4 120mm PWM fans to ensure that I was able to maximize AIO performance. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. With the GPU components in hand, let's do the upgrade. Remember how I said that a question I see a lot is how to best orient and install your RAD for AIO liquid cooling solutions? In this situation, all you need to do is go back to basic physics to figure out a solution. Water is heavier than air. That's it. The reason this matters is there's always going to be a small amount of air trapped inside your AIO. So to extend pump life, you want to make sure that this air gets trapped and doesn't flow into your pump. As long as the air gets trapped in a part of the rad that is unable to feed the pump, then you're great. For Acetec based AIO designs with a pump housed inside the water block, you should avoid having the pump higher than the top of the tubes feeding the radiator. So the best configuration is horizontal at the top of your case. That way the air will get trapped at the top of the rad and your tubes will be at the bottom with no way for the air to flow into the pump. The next best orientation is to orient the rad on the side or front of your case with the tubes at the bottom. The air will get trapped at the top of your rad with no way to enter the pump. If your tubes don't reach, then you can position the rad with the tubes at the top only if the tubes are above the water block that houses the pump. 
The worst possible orientation is to place your rad on the bottom of your case. In this situation, the air will almost certainly be ingested into your pump and the pump will eventually seize up. Hopefully this helps to answer this common question once and for all. With the upgrade now complete, let's move on to component testing. All testing was performed at two primary conditions for each configuration, both air and water. One at baseline GPU clock speeds, together with one at max stable overclock speeds. For the overclocks, I modified GPU boost clock and memory clock in GPU tweak 3, since this was an Asus card. The max stable overclock was established by running Heaven to get initial boost and memory clock estimates. I then ran Superposition to check the stability of the memory overclock, which was followed by multiple runs of 3D Mark Speedway, Port Royal, and Time Spy Extreme to tweak the settings further. Once the overclock GPU passed all of these tests, I stress tested it for an hour with Fermark. If it passed, then I moved forward with the benchmark testing. I kept the baseline clocks the same for both configurations, however I optimized the overclock for each. Turns out that the AIO cooler allowed me to overclock the memory more than on the air cooler, but the GPU boost clock appeared to be silicon limited because I couldn't vary it between them. Given that this is a GPU, I also limited testing to a resolution of 4K only, since that will place the highest load on the GPU during the benchmarks. With that said, let's look at the benchmarks to see if it's worth it. In today's video, we saw just how easy it is to upgrade a GPU with an AIO. But the question remains, is it worth it? Based on the performance results alone, I would say no. The difference simply isn't large enough. The air cooler for this card is clearly doing a great job of keeping the GPU and memory cool enough to deliver excellent performance. That said, there is a significant thermal difference of around 10 degrees Celsius in favor of the AIO, but it's not translating into meaningful gaming FPS increases. If you are concerned about longevity of your card and achieving the maximum possible stable overclock, then the decrease in temperatures could be very attractive to you. One point to note is that I tested on an open bench table, so this really is the best case scenario for any air-cooled solution. If you're in a restricted airflow case, such as the Height Y60, where large GPUs are pushed up against the glass, then a GPU AIO might be a good solution. If, however, you're in a case with great airflow and room Room, then the baseline air-cooled solution really should be sufficient. I was really hoping to see larger FPS games in gaming titles, but unfortunately, it's not the case. So this brings us to the price. At 280 US dollars, this is by no means a cheap upgrade, even for a 2000 US dollar GPU. 
To justify that price, I would have hoped to have seen more of a performance increase. There is some performance benefit to be had, but not enough to justify pulling your card apart and installing this solution. Aesthetically, it looks nice, but I think the base air cooling shroud actually looks better, but that's something you'll have to decide upon yourself. So if you have an air-cooled 4090, my strong recommendation is to simply enjoy it. If you think your thermals may be a little high, then consider repasting the thermal interface material versus changing to a GPU AIO. As you can see, it's really not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as I delve into every aspect of PC building and upgrading. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future upgrades you would like me to look at. Bye for now.